All right. Hey, you guys, what's up? Obviously, uh, some changes that I have done to that particular car over here. Uh, nothing really has changed on this particular one. We pretty much left that the way that it is, so really nothing going on there. Uh, but uh, some changes have gone on on this car, uh, as you'll see coming up. So uh, a couple of things that you'll really like about this is uh, the fact that this car is getting some performance modifications on it. Not exactly staying stock, and I do have some future mods that will be going on this as well. So some really cool stuff, if I do say so myself, uh, that is gonna be happening to the hatchback. So uh, one of the first things that you can't really see at all in this little scoop right here uh, is the front lip that I have put on this car, as you will see right now. All right, what's up? I'm just doing kind of a review on the front lip to my car right here. This is the Basin R front lip. As you can see, this is for the narrow body Subaru WRX. I'm doing this in my garage because it's a little bit warmer in here than it is outside right now. But uh, the reason why I wanted to do a, a review video on this is because this is such an awesome looking lip to add to the car. And it really does, even on stock suspension, kind of makes the car look a little bit lower here. Um, but the fitment is awesome. I mean, look at the fitment. It fits right to the bumper all the way around. And even when you look at the front section where it raises up right here, I mean, this is following the body line all the way around. And it adds a really nice look to the front lip here, which is like the reason why I got this thing. So as you can see, it just does an amazing job here. Quality is really good. You do have to drill um, these self-tapping screws into it, so it is good to have a nice drill uh, to have with you. But overall, the fitment is perfect. It is awesome. Uh, really high quality. As you can see, like no flex in that at all. So really high quality, it adds a really nice style to your vehicle. Definitely well worth the money. Uh, this is the Basin R front lip. There's really not much to explain other than it's made of a uh, polyurethane material. So it is a long lasting material, a very durable material, and uh, not really a lot of flex to it. It does give it some nice style to the front end of the vehicle. It does lower the front end a little bit to the ground kind of gives you that splitter look on the front end of the car too. So if you're looking for something to add a little bit of style to your narrow body WRX, definitely check out the Basin R front lip for the 08 to 10 2010 Subaru Impreza WRX. Yeah, I think that is an awesome piece to add to your car. I really do. Um, because for one thing it adds a lot of style to this car, particularly if you have the narrow body WRX. The narrow body ones. Uh, I know I'm full of energy right now and I have no idea why. Um, so it, this car doesn't have like the fender flares or anything, so it is kind of bland and boring which is why adding some little things here and there is kind of important to the car, which is exactly why one of the other things that, again, you can't see because it's all the way back here is the wing risers on it, which you will see now. So as you can see by the final product, here's the about the gap that you're looking at right here. So there's about uh, maybe about an inch gap 
that this has been raised up. Now you can actually adjust this a little bit more. I have this on the lowest point right now. Um, so you can actually raise the spoiler up more by adding spacers on all of the points. So you can raise this whole thing up and it comes with a bunch of spacers too. Uh, so you can raise the whole thing up and doing the research that I've done, it looks like if you want to change the pitch angle of it, you just kind of add spacers to the center ones, not these side posts here, but the center ones, and that'll kind of help the pitch angle of the, uh, of the spoiler a little bit. So that's kind of the uh, adjustments that you do to it. Now overall, actually, I think the spoiler risers look pretty cool on here. Definitely adds a little bit of a different look to it. Um, but there is some downsides to this. Now, and I'm going to show you that here in a second. But I just kind of wanted to give you a walk around here. And this thing is pretty solid on there. I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't move at all. So it's pretty solid on there. But this is the downside to it. Let me unlock this real quick here. There we go. And pop. That's as far as she goes. <laughs> That's it. So just to give you an idea. That's as far as the hatchback goes. And here's why. You'll see how close the spoiler is to those edges. Let me come around the other side and show you. Okay. And you can really see how close they get. Now, the kit comes with these cables that you see run here and these little brackets down here. And this is how you adjust it. So you basically loosen up this and you can either pull more in or out depending on you know where it's at now they say the more you raise the spoiler up the more clearance you're going to be able to have so the more you can open up the hatch uh, but again i didn't want to have the spoiler all the way up that high up in the air so again the downside is when you're looking at the back end of the car you don't get the full clearance and i'm right now this is eye level for me Okay, <laughs> so as you can see, wow, the wrap looks all messed up under here. Um, but as you can see, it, it definitely uh, doesn't open up all the way. So you kind of have to duck to get underneath. And let me just kind of sit back here. You know, like you're sitting at a car show or whatever. I mean, I guess if you're sitting all the way in the hatch, it's not too, too bad. It kind of hangs down just enough. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, overall, it's, uh, it's not too uh, user-friendly. So you do lose a little bit of that hatch opening um, to get in and out of. So it does make it kind of a little bit of a pain in the butt when you're putting stuff in the hatch. But overall, it's... it's it's not bad considering, you know, 90% of the time most people have their, don't even open up the hatch. So overall, it's very good. Now, some of the advantages, I know some people are going to say, well, what about the aerodynamic advantage? You know, does it have any, supply any downforce or anything? Probably not. Uh, <laughs> realistically, what this does is it allows air to travel underneath here. Now, whether it actually creates downforce or not, I don't know. I don't have a wind tunnel, so I don't have anything to test this theory out with but when you had this spoiler attached directly to the deck lid it created a vortex of air underneath here so if you went down a dusty road or even sometimes early in the morning you get some dust that would um that would build up like right underneath or right on the back window well now that air has a way to channel underneath here and it will actually keep your glass cleaner keep some of that dust off the window so to keep that glass, that rear glass cleaner uh, on the back side. And I know you got this. I know that's what a lot of people are going to say is I know you got that rear window wiper. But 
Uh, if you want to keep the glass cleaner from dust or whatever going down the road, um, this will definitely keep it a lot cleaner having that air being able to passage itself underneath here. And the spoiler does help channel that air to come down the, the back glass of the vehicle. So overall, I think the uh, actual look of this is actually pretty good. So I think it ties together with that front lip that I have down there. So I think overall, I think the look of it is pretty good now. So again, another little performance, uh, I don't really want to say performance part added, but something to kind of give it a little bit more aggressive look. And I think it does a pretty good job at that. So this is the VMS uh, wing riser kit. Uh, for the 2008 to 2014 Subaru WRX hatchback and STI hatchback. Oh guys, I just wanted to like see what my hat looked like in the camera, which is actually pretty cool. This is a really comfortable hat that Subaru sent me, which is awesome. I, I really like it. So, you know, trying to get it straight on my dumb head. Anyways, um, so as you can see, some aesthetic modifications have been done to the car, which is really important to make the car look really cool because the narrow bodies, again, they don't have a whole lot of style to them, even with that factory little lip kit that they throw on them. There really isn't much style to them, so to add a little bit of flair to the car, adding the wing risers on the back really changed the way the back end of the car looked. And the same thing with the front lip that's on the front of the car really kind of changed the way this car looks. It definitely looks more racy uh, than it did before. So kind of doing the same thing with that car we did a while back. It's got the uh, spoiler risers on the back, four inch risers uh, on the back of the car as well as the front lip that's on it as well. So this car is nowhere near what that car is at the moment. That car has definitely got a lot more done to it, but Soon enough, we will make some progress on this car, but it's just kind of working its way around. So uh, this car is running a Cobb Stage 1 map right now, Stage 1 Plus actually, right now uh, with the Cobb access port uh, on the windscreen, as you can see right there, uh, mounted to the windscreen. So it's running a Stage 1 map and it has something a little special underneath the hood to give me a little bit of sound out of it as you'll see right now. Okay so as you can see here it's pretty stock looking uh, WRX engine and uh, right there is the Cobb SF intake and I know there's a lot of other people that have this intake on their car and if you're running the Cobb access port um, I do recommend just going ahead and getting this. And as you can see, it does have the aluminum air box. Uh, it is very, very well constructed. It is held with uh, the top plate has four Allen key uh, bolts that hold this piece on. And then it's also mounted to the sidewall here and up front up here. Um, and it kind of wraps around. It's nice. It couples uh, the... the uh, intake away from all of the heat that is generated in this general area because you do have the exhaust manifold down here to the up pipe here to the turbocharger back here and then the down pipe so you have a lot of exhaust system running on this side of the engine and that's actually where the uh, intake box is now this has actually kept a lot of the, uh, the air temperature uh, from outside the heat especially here in Florida the heat away. Now one of the things that I have noticed with this is my air intake temperatures usually run about 9 to 10 degrees above the ambient temperature outside and it depends on which time of day it is and what's going on outside so uh, but average it seems to be about 10 degrees above the ambient temperature outside so if it's 80 degrees outside it might run about 89 90 at my uh, mass airflow sensor so it is about 10 degrees higher but compared to what the actual uh, temperature is in the engine bay I actually don't see uh, where maybe running 10 degrees above the ambient would be anything negative now again if you do a first startup like a cold startup like what you would have here 
um, the temperature might only range about four to five, five degrees above the ambient temperature because you're keeping the air box cold. So it utilizes the factory snorkel that goes and flows air right in here. Um, the intake itself is just a basically a solid piece of really thick, high quality, uh, I like to say that it's plastic, but um, some people might argue with that on me on that one. But that's kind of what it feels like. Mass airflow sensor sits right here, um, which does kind of make it a pain in the ass if you have to clean the thing because you have to take this off in order to clean your mass airflow sensor. So that is kind of a bummer right there. Uh, I did get the aftermath hose for it. Um, I actually picked all of this stuff up used from a friend. Uh, so I had to clean the air filter, I had to clean the mass airflow sensor, but everything else just bolted right on. It was a full kit. Um, so we do have this uh, aftermath hose here, and that gets rid of that uh, wrinkled section that goes right here. So it's a smoother airflow going into your turbo inlet hose. So straighter air, smoother air, uh, just makes for overall better performance. And, you, and even on stock, before I had the cob tune on it, uh, even on stock tune, it definitely felt a lot better, but around... 4,500, 5,000 RPMs. I, I had a little bit of a hiccup, um, but I tried not to drive it with, you know, drive it hard with this intake on there, but you could definitely feel a difference. A lot more torque, a lot more power in the low end. So definitely made a huge difference even on a stock tune, but obviously recommend upgrading the tune uh, for sure. And uh, once I got it tuned with the stage one map on there, it is awesome. I mean, this thing moves out pretty good even on a stage one map so this is the uh the cob sf intake pretty basic pretty easy uh to put together and definitely a high quality piece so well worth the money uh even if you have to buy it brand new i got lucky and was able to pick this up used from a fellow subaru member so that is it that is the cob sf intake for the 08 to 14 wrx and that is definitely something that is important to have to your car is a nice intake system to your vehicle. Now, obviously both vehicles have a really nice intake system. That one has a pair and short ram air intake and that one has the uh, Cobb SF intake on it uh, with the air box, which is really, really nice. And again, I picked that up for a really killer deal from a good friend of mine, uh, Matt Montano, which you have probably seen his car in a bunch of Boostaholic videos and I do have to say that his car is a badass machine. It is an absolutely amazing car and the color of it, I love that orange color that's on his car if you haven't seen it. Uh, I will put a link to his video uh, that Boostaholics did uh, in the description below so that way you guys can see his video but he's the one that hooked me up with that intake. I do have to say a really good friend of mine. Thank you buddy, uh, you're the best. So uh, that is just an amazing friend right there to help me out. So uh, soon enough, there is a downpipe that will be coming to, the, or for the car, I should say. Uh, we will be doing an install on that, as well as uh, hopefully we'll be throwing on a heat shield on it. Not sure which one yet, we're working on that. But I think you guys will be really surprised with the downpipe that I'm getting, because it's a little different than what uh, normal people would probably see. So uh, some really good things are coming to this car, so we'll finally be able to get this thing on a stage two map, which I've heard, reading up and talking to so many people, I've heard that running stage two on this car just really opens the thing up and it makes it really awesome. So I'm really hoping for this thing to be just an absolute amazing car and then hopefully we'll kind of be snowballing into other stuff in the future but for right now at least we can get it on stage two see what this thing can do and maybe one day we'll actually be able to get to see these two run against each other because I would really like to see what that car has got against that car big differences here two liter with an automatic so it's a 4E four electronic automatic transmission uh, 40 transmission, but it's got the VF39 turbo front mount intercooled running 18 and a half PSI uh, Full turbo back exhaust external wastegate. This is my old setup from my old car Difference is, is that motor in this car does have some high mileage on it, but it's very well maintained. It runs really good 
Uh, so absolutely no issues with this particular car. So that is in the works here. So, uh, but that one runs really good. Now this one, obviously newer EJ255 motor, uh, lower miles on it, uh, but it's got the VF52, which I know the compressor wheels and everything are like the same size. Um, but top mount intercooled, pretty much a stage two, nothing fancy. Internal wastegate running right now, it's at 17, uh, 17 and a half. Um, I'm sure once it goes stage two tune, it's an 18 and a half tune from Cobb on that one. And again, I don't know if I'm gonna go with a aftermarket tune at that point, but uh, I'd like to see what these two will do against each other um, one day. I don't know when, but I'd like to see what they'll do one day against each other. Uh, automatic, automatic, manual, uh, two liter to 2.5 liter. So we'll kind of see. Turbo sizes are really the same. Uh, front mount intercooled and then top mount intercooled, factory top mount intercooled by the way. Uh, this one's got the Rev9 uh, front mount intercooler on it. So both running the same amount of pressure. Um, I don't know, I'd just like to see what they would do. So old car, new car, who knows what'll happen. So hopefully you guys enjoy the video. Uh, stay tuned for more coming up and uh, keep watching for more stuff coming on in my damn Subaru garage. Woo!